Andy, what's going on, man? Not much, Larry. How you doing, bro? I'm doing good, man. It's good to see you again. Good to see you too, man. It's been a while. It, it's been four years. It's been four years since we uh, first... we I came on MFCEO back in 2016, and I feel like I'm looking at like half of you now. I, yeah, I think you, you are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I think at that time I was... What was that, 16? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I had just started ago. getting my fitness back going again. Um, I was in the 350s. Yeah. That's unreal. Yeah, yeah. I, I lost all. I lost 110 pounds. Dang. Um, and then now I've worked my way back up a little bit. But I mean, all that first that first burst was 110 pounds, and then yeah. you know, it was rebuilding the muscle and stuff like that. So, been on it since then, man. That's unreal, yeah. man. So, so tell, first of all, tell us about your fitness journey. Yeah. So, and, and we're going to talk a lot about a lot about a lot of different things, but fitness journey in particular. So, what was the kickstart for you? I just knew it had to be done, man. Um, you know, for a long time, I was very, most of my business life, I was pretty fit. And then when I started making better money and I started moving away from the face of the business, um, I started to realize that uh, it wasn't about so much my physique anymore. It was more about me managing people. And I started justified, like not staying on top of it. As like, hey, man, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, these guys are the face now. And and, and I kind of just got lazy. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> I had a couple health issues uh, in 2012 that really kind of put me in a bad place mentally. And um, the weight came on, man. Yeah. You know, I'm a big dude anyway. So, like, even when I'm in shape and I'm lean, I'm in, you know, 240, 250. Um, so, I... I you know, and I like to eat. So yeah, yeah well, who <laughs> so, doesn't, right? Yeah. And that's yeah. how I was justifying, you know, uh, and satisfying the stress of being in a, in a new phase of business for me. Um, very stressful, very hard time during those time, those years, the, the years of, you know, 2010 and 2015, uh, probably the hardest five years of my business life for sure. So far, uh, just because we were stretching and growing so much and it was a constant battle every day and, um, and still a battle every day, but I think I've become more acclimated to it and I have a better team now, um, that allows me to focus on it, but I, I did what everybody does, you know, oh, I'm, I'm working 18 hours a day. I don't have time, you know, oh, I'm going to eat whatever is there. And, uh, it got away from me. Yeah. yeah. And so I think, you know, just getting it back, go getting it back going was more of a, I just knew it had to be done, man. I got tired of getting made fun of online. I got tired of the comments. You know, I got, it was more like, uh, it made me mad. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like, okay. Yeah, I'm a fat ass. <laughs> all right. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, I, I'm very good at taking the negativity and harnessing it into productive action. And that's kind of how I'm wired. Yeah. So, um, so Yeah. And I've been after it since, you know, I started J July, or I'm sorry, January 4th, 2016 is when I, I put a video out online, basically calling myself out. And, uh, I've been, I've been on it pretty much this whole time since then. Um, you know, I've gone through little phases a month or two at a time where I haven't been as strict, but I mean, all in all, I've kept up pretty good. It's definitely the best shape I've ever been in right yeah. now. So I saw a most recent photo of you on, on Instagram and I was reflecting on the last time that we were together and I mm. was like, holy crap, man, guy looks completely different yeah. than he did last time I saw him. But what was, was there something like right before you were like, okay, publicly, this is what I'm going to do. Was there a tipping point where you're like, you know what, man, this is it. Like, I'm just, I'm going to go full on with, with my health journey again. Um, it, it, there's a lot of little things. There wasn't one big thing. You know, the big, the big thing was, is I knew, I knew for sure that if I didn't get control of it, our business was going to not be what it could be and what I said it was going to be and what I was committed to making it. Uh, so I knew that I had to get control of it or we weren't going to ever do, you know, this, what we're, what the building we're sitting in and then this, the growth we're having, it would have never happened. Mm -hmm. So it was more about um, tying that work into not just the benefit for me, but the benefit for my team and the people yeah. I care about and the people around me. So I want to keep going with that. I know we talked about getting into your childhood and your own relationship with your dad, but I feel like this is a really pertinent topic right now because so many, I mean, it's dad show. 
Yeah. So when, when guys get married, they start having kids, you know, they own a business or they're working for the man or whatever it is. The first thing that we shelve is our own health, not, mm-hmm. not just physical, but mental and emotional health as well. It's like, okay, I got to throw myself on the sword, you know, for everybody else. I got to make my wife happy, my kids happy. I got to work and, you know, health will just take a back seat. Mm-hmm. And that's unfortunate. So I'm, I'm glad that you said that because so many of us, you know, think that, okay, well, in order for me to grow my business, I have to shelf my health. Mm-hmm. But but you, on the other hand, was like, no, if we're going to get to the next level, man, health has got to be a priority. Mm-hmm. Was that a difficult shift or was that just something like, no, man, I got to do this? No, I looked around at the people. Look, look, when I, when I started, when I started getting back at this, I was already a wealthy dude. You know what yeah. I mean? This wasn't like I was poor at this point. Mm-hmm. So I looked around and I look around at my team and I look at these guys who have paid, you know, at that time, you know, six, seven years uh, with me. And I think, dude, I'm letting them down. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, and this doesn't have to do with just uh, like a lot of people probably listen. They're like, well, yeah, you're in the fitness industry. I'm in a lot of other industries too. And it has nothing to do with being the face of first form because I'm not right now. It has to do with me being sharp, me having the acuity, me having the fortitude and the grit and the toughness to handle what we, what we need to have, uh, to move forward. And, you know, I had to uh, basically back up my own talk. You know what I mean? It, it was kind of weird to be, because I was speaking at that time too. I was still speaking all over the place. And, um, you know, I'm up on stage talking to people about getting better. And I'm 350 pounds. Like that doesn't, that, that doesn't make sense, mm-hmm. you know? And I look back at videos now and, and I'm like, dude, what were you doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, a lot of guys find that that situation difficult. I think, uh, I think that's the natural first reaction is we're going to put everything to the side and give everything that we have to everybody else. But what you don't realize is that, um, when you don't have anything to give anymore, that's it. Mm -hmm. So, um, that hour or two a day and that discipline that you exercise to control what you put in your mouth. I personally believe that everything else is built off of that. Yeah. Um, because at, at a at a base level, this hunger is a very good tool to uh, develop discipline around, right? A lot of people can't control their hunger at all, or they can't control food. And I understand because I'm, I'm a food addict. Um, I have been for my whole life. And so for me, um, I started thinking about it like, dude, if I can't control like something basic, like what I put in my mouth, what can I control? And that's kind of where the, the, the switch started for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I started looking at it from a different aspect. You know, when I was younger, I wanted to be fit so I could go to the pool or go to the beach or whatever and look good for all the ladies, you know? And, uh, and at this point in my life, I wasn't, I don't really, I didn't care if I was, you know, bigger or whatever. It didn't bother me. It wasn't something that bothered me, what other people thought, bothered me what I thought. Mm -hmm. And, um, and when that, when that switch started to flip for me, that's when it got real. You know what I mean? So I started just basically holding myself accountable to my own standard. And, um, you know, I think that's where everything started to change for me, even though I had already been able to grit my way to some pretty good success when that started. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's been a lot easier since I've been controlling the things that we're talking about. Right, right. So talk to us about exactly what you said, you know, the fact that I'm taking care of myself, my health, and all these things, everything else, it trickled into everything else. So how did it impact your relationship with Emily? How did it impact business? How did it impact friendships? Like, how did this trickle-down effect? Where did you see it sort of blossom in these other areas? Well, I lost a lot. I, you know, I'll be honest. I'm not a great friend. Um, <clears throat> you know, I don't have kids. Uh, Emily and I don't have kids. We have a great relationship. Wait, wait you don't have kids? You know, this is a dad show. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No way, cut. No. I, yeah, bro, I've had to raise thousands of other people's kids. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, um, and that's a literal fact. I've done a lot of correctional raising, um, bring people who had bad, bad parents to the light, so mm-hmm. to speak. I uh, spent my whole life doing it. So the last thing that I'm really interested in, to be honest, is having kids of my own that I have to spend another 20 years doing that. That's mm-hmm. the truth. So I know a lot of guys are like, well, you're really missing out. Well, you're not me. You don't have my life. So you don't really know. Right. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> so 
I think that, you know, everything got better, man. I mean, way better. Not even, it's not even comparable. Mm -hmm. You know, at that time in my life, I was drinking three or four nights a week. I'm going to uh, Billy G's here in Kirkwood, you know, yeah. all the time. Great place, by the way. Yeah, I love yeah. it. I was, I was actually there yesterday, um, but not drinking. But, I mean, like, I had started to, you know, do what every moderately successful person seems to do, is they get to a point where they're comfortable and they get lazy, they get fat, they start making excuses, and they think that their success excuses them from holding themselves to their own standard. And that did made me feel bad about myself, right? When I look in the mirror, I'm like, dude, that's – you're, you're a fake. You're a fraud. You're full of shit. Like imposter syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. But except for it was real. Right. And, um, you know, I just got tired of having that. Yeah. And that was it. And so, you know, the relationship with uh, Emily and I is 10 million times better. The relationship I have with my brother is 10. Everything's better. Uh, I have less relationships. I have less people I talk to in terms of like, um, you know, all, when you start to live that kind of life, a lot of people see it as selfish, right? They see it as, you know, oh, well, he's into this weird stuff or he got, you know, we're not good enough for him anymore or this or that. And, you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to live down because the people I happen to align with in high school or college don't want to get better. So there's been some relationships that were let go, but I'm fine with that. And I'm at peace with it. It doesn't bother me. I'm not, I don't hold animosity towards any of those people. I love them when I see them, but I'm not going out of my way to foster a relationship and that's okay. Right. You know? So, um, I think a lot of people put a lot of, uh, of, of false pressure on themselves to be loyal to people that really are only in their lives because they aligned with a certain set of circumstances at a certain time. Um, you know, and they get guilted by these people and, oh man, you know, why won't you come to this happy hour on Tuesday? Well, because I'm not into happy hours on Tuesdays, bro. And if you were my real friend, you'd understand that. Right. You know what I mean? So just kind of growing up, I guess. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, that makes sense. Especially with the alcohol thing and guys, yeah. guys just in general, because it's like, how are we going to talk? How are we going to relate without, without beer, without a, you know, yeah. a glass of bourbon or yeah. something like that? No, nah, dude, I, yeah. I have just as good of a time with no alcohol as yeah. I do with alcohol. Yeah. In fact, usually a better time um, because I remember it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, clearly. Right. So, uh, and getting, you know, I, I still drink every once in a while. I'm not, a, I'm not like anti-alcohol. I'm just anti-alcohol four days a week, right. <laughs> right. you know? Uh, so don't take it the wrong way, guys. Like I love uh, a, a cold beer and I'll have one with you any day of the week, but I'm not having you more than one day a week. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so I'm not sitting here trying to be like I'm on my high horse with it, but it made my life a lot better. Yeah. You know? Well, probably, I mean, it sounds like what it did, it really reeled in some discipline, some boundaries. For sure. Yeah. For sure, yeah. dude. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and the boundary thing is like a big deal. You know, I never really understood what that meant. Until I, until the last couple of years, you know, um, I met, uh, Dr. Nicole, uh, the holistic psychologist, you follow her? No, I don't. Uh, I, no, she's no, awesome. She, okay. She's on, uh, she's on Instagram. I've had her on my show a couple of times. Um, I learned a lot about that from her, just observing her and listening to what she had to say and stuff like that. And it's made my life better, man. You know, cause I used to feel guilty about those things. Like I'd let those people make me feel bad. Like I would go home and the night that I didn't go out because I wanted to go to the gym and train, I'd feel like, fuck, dude, I let these guys down, you know? But I don't, to me, it's a not, it's a non-issue anymore. It's not even a 1% one, 1 thought in my mind, you know? Do you think it's because you're perceiving it through a different paradigm or you've just gotten, you've gotten so used to the benefits that you've seen through your life by not doing those things as often as you were? Dude, if you want me to speak frankly, yeah, uh, I just I'm on a different level than than those people. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you know what I mean. And like, unless they want to rise to that level, I'm not going to lower to my to that level. Right. You get know what I'm saying? Right. This is not the life I want to live. So, and I, I'm not going to, you know, if that's the life someone wants to live, that's fine. Right. But that's not what I want to do. Yeah. So. No, it's good. I, I I love the boundary aspect and what you're going to do and what you're not going to do and how you're going to operate. So, hey, let's let's switch gears, man, because so I've been a fan of you, obviously, for a long time. I know you've got a pretty tight relationship with your own dad. I actually went back and listened to the podcast that you had on with your dad at the mm -hmm. MFCO. But, man, you're a grinder. You're a hard worker. You're successful. Reflecting on your childhood and just even your own relationship with your dad, what, what was it like growing up for you? My dad was hard as fuck on us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, 
my dad would be on the news right now if <laughs> if he, if he was a dad right now, like with kids. Yeah. So like, you know, we my dad and I and Sal talk about this all the time privately. Like, the way we did it was not the way people are doing it now. Sure. Um. Yeah. <clears throat> so. You know, there was high expectations. Uh, there was a lot of pushing, and there was a lot of uh, teaching and encouragement. Re- real stuff, though. Not my dad never sugarcoated stuff to us. He always talked to us like we were adults. He told us the truth from day one. Um, it was never. It was never like this overly loving relationship um, in terms of like affectionate and all that stuff. Like it wasn't like that, man. It was like he was like a coach. And so, uh, but but now that I look back. I realized that he actually loved us way more than most of the other dads love their kids. You know what I'm saying? Um, So it was different, you know? Uh, You know, we grew up, we we, we weren't, we weren't taken care of in terms of like how kids are taken care of. Like, dude, I've been doing my own laundry, my own cooking, my own cleaning since I was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? My, my mom, my dad didn't fold my laundry. They didn't do my laundry. They didn't, do anything like that for us. So we were, we were, uh, we grew up a little bit different environment and, and, uh, I'm thankful for it. Yeah. You know, self-reliance. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a hard, I mean, I've got four boys, which is like raising, you know, speaking of drunk people, it's like raising four drunks oh, at all yeah. times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You say things out loud, man, like, please don't eat your cheese and crackers while you're taking a dump. Like yeah. I've actually yeah. said that out loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. But I notice as a father, and I think I speak for a lot of fathers, I'm raising my kids very similar to how your dad raised mm-hmm. you. Like my 10 and 12. So I have 14, 12, six and four. Yeah. The 14 year old, the 12 year old, they're like, I don't have any clean clothes. And our response to that is whose fault is that? Yeah. You know, it's like, you do your laundry. Yeah. You fold your laundry. You clean your room. And then I love the other thing, too. It's like, we, you know, you see a mess downstairs. like, oh, you know, so-and-so, my friend left that. I'm like, that's your space? Yeah. He's your friend. Ultimately, you're responsible for that. I battle a lot with, because I came from just crazy childhood, just absolute, I and mean, that's another story. But yeah. there's a part of me as a father that I want to give, 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 serve, serve, serve. But I know in the long run that is not going to serve them right. so it, it's a mixture of love and affection not pampering tough love and and life lessons yeah right. and I, I think that's that's pretty accurate about yeah. how it was for us um you know we grew up we had a pretty messed up childhood as well uh my <laughs> my uh, my parents were divorced early they did not get along the the steps people that got involved were not good people they didn't get along and it was, and you know, we were used as like, you know, pawns to, against, you know, those things. And, and that, that went on. That was pretty regular. You know, I, I didn't realize it until I got older and I look back and I'm like, man, that's a pretty shitty way to treat the kids, mm-hmm. but, uh, it is what it is. And so, but I'm still thankful for it because now I know what not to do. Just like you, yeah. you, I can remember last time we spoke to, you know, this is why you do what you do because of where the, where you came from. Exactly. So, yeah. you know, I don't look at it as like a, Oh, poor me. I had this weird, I didn't get, I didn't get my childhood. Like, dude, I don't give a fuck. Like I learned all the tools that I need to learn. Yeah. And I look back and I say, I'm thankful for that. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that happened that way because it taught me so much about people and how about life. And now I'm able to not make those same mistakes. You know what I mean? Right. With other people. So, um, it's, uh, you know, it, I think everything, like you, you mentioned Jocko um, when we were talking before, you know, I think he's got it figured out. You know, it's about personal accountability in, 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 in all situations, no matter what. Solve the problem. It doesn't matter whose fault it is. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you adopt that attitude, it's, mag- it's, it's kind of magical because most of the problems in your life disappear because they aren't other people's problems anymore. They're your problems. And that's right. fine. You know, so I think that's the way to do it. I agree. And that's one thing we actually, we teach in our house is that is, is own it. Yeah. You know, so like my kids will come to me and be like, I I got to see on this, on this test. Like, well, why'd you get to see? Well, I got to see because like, you know, I didn't know that these questions were going to be on it. And I was like, did you study as hard as you could? No, I didn't really study as hard as I could. Could you have studied more? Yeah, I could have studied more. I'm like, well, just own it. That's why you got to like, see. Yeah, I'm That's just it. like, yeah. you're not really going to, we're going to have a discussion and a conversation. I'm not going to punish you. In fact, I'm going to respect you more if you're like, dad, 
I got a, I got a D, mm-hmm. and it's because I didn't study. That's it. But here's what I learned. Yeah. And I always tell them, I was like, look, your honesty and your ownership is celebrated and not punished. Mm-hmm. Like, that is, that is a big theme in our house. Your honesty and your ownership will not be punished. Like that's you, awesome. The, the punishment yeah. is whatever grade you got. Now let's have a conversation and evolve from it. Mm-hmm. But going back to your childhood, what age were you when your parents got divorced? I think I was five. Okay. I like, I'm pretty sure it was five. It was young, man. Like, yeah. I barely remember them being together. Okay. Yeah. And what was the dynamic like as far as like how often did you see your dad? How often were you at your mom's? Uh, we went to my dad's every other weekend and every Wednesday night. Okay. Yeah. And so what was it like growing That was up, up- until we were about uh, uh, up until we were like 12, 13. And then uh when I got into high school, I pretty much lived with my dad. Okay. And Sal lived with my mom. And so uh, my mom moved to Florida when we were like I don't know, 13, 12 or 13. And so he basically raised himself in in that house. So he was left to like watch the house. So <laughs> It was cool because we, you know, when we were kids, we had a lot of parties and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. like, uh, it was just weird, man. So he lived in Florida. No, no, no. He, it, that she bought another house in Florida. Okay. And they had a house here in St. Louis. Okay. And so they, uh, he was basically left to watch that house. Got it. And okay. Then, and so I stayed with my dad because it was closer to where I went to high school. Okay. So. So and how old were you when you moved in with him? 13 or 14. Okay. Was that like totally your decision where you're like, Hey, this yeah, is, yeah, it was like, well, well, she was kind of in Florida the whole time. So there was really nothing they could say. Right. So I just did whatever I wanted. Got it. Okay. So I just found myself staying there more. So what was that like? I mean, those, those are pretty profound years already. So living with him, what, how was your relationship with him through high school? Well, he, he worked like I work now. Yeah. So like I, you know, I saw him late at night and, uh, that was it. Yeah. You know, I mean, he wasn't, <laughs> dude, listen, I feel bad saying it because people hear it and they're like, God, that must've been really bad, but it wasn't like, it was like, it was like living like I would live now. If I live with him now and I was his roommate, it would be the same thing. That's how it was. So, uh, you know, every once in a while we had a barbecue or something, mm-hmm. you know, but it wasn't, it was like having a roommate. It yeah. Was, it was, it was just different. You and I grew up very similar. So yeah. I, I live with my mom. She was married three times. Uh, there were guys always in and out, whether she was married to him, dating him, it was always the same guy. Right. But my mom, especially in those years that you're talking about, same thing. My mom was working a lot. She was supporting us on the weekends. She would be dating and that kind of thing. So I was left kind of by myself Mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's funny that you talk about how you're not, you, you have, you're not a victim. Of your childhood. Bro, look yeah. at my life. Yeah. Look at this building you're sitting in. I know. It's pretty awesome, by the way. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I mean, like, how can I say I'm a victim of anything? Yeah. That's why it gets me irritated when I see these guys on the NBA and all over the place pretending like they're victims of shit. No, you're not. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I it would be, you would think it was pretty ridiculous if I, if I were to sit here and be like, oh, yeah, man, it was really bad. Uh, yeah. Like, come on, dude. Like, I learned what I needed to learn. And was there ever a time where you were just like, ah, oh, man, this, this life is hard. It's pretty hard. Did you ever, cause the reason I ask is cause I know for a while, probably in my twenties, I kind of got looped into that victim role a little bit. I went through a phase where I got really mad at my mom. Yeah. Like mad. Um, and my stepdad, like I never really had a great relationship with him. Uh, and that's being pretty nice about it, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, I didn't think it was cool that she moved to Florida when we were when we were so young. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But at the, I went. You know, I'm not. I'm over it. It's not a big deal. Uh, but I think that's. I guess that was the closest I came to that. You know what I'm saying? I was just mad. Like I just thought, like, why, why would you do that? Right. You know what I mean? Like, and you know, she she knows how I feel. We've talked about it. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I'm I'm not mad or holding any grudges about it anymore. But it's just, yeah, I definitely went through that phase. Do you think, so, you know, my mom, she struggled with alcohol. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know about drugs for sure or not, but I, I think that there was probably some drug play in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was really hands off. There was, a, there was a lot of abuse as well. But I think back on that, when I was in my 20s, I, I went through the same thing. I was angry, like, man, I feel screwed up. Like, I, I don't have relationship skills and that kind of thing. And I, was, I, I didn't have true ownership. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, that was, that was her fault. Mm-hmm. And I've evolved through that, obviously. But what I can tell you is living in that victim mindset, 
for so long, for, for a while. Right. Um, I look back on it now, I'm 45 now. I look back on it now and I'm like, man, I think there's a part of her. I think that, I think she did the best she could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how she had. I got that same, that, that exact same conclusion. That's how I, how I came to it as well. Yeah. I'm like, look, cause like I started to realize like, you know, you know, now I'm married and I have my own thing going and I'm, I'm like, fuck, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> you know, and yeah. everybody thinks I do. So, so I, uh, I, I, when I got to that point, then yeah. I, that's whenever I started to look back and be like, man, maybe I was a little bit too, uh, harsh on that situation. Nobody knows what to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And people are going to make mistakes and, <clears throat> and it, it's just part of life. Mm-hmm. And so I think, for me, um, the biggest thing is, is like that I believe, and I, I do believe this, is that you can learn from every situation, right? Um, like I said, you know, I never got along with my stepdad, but I learned a lot. You know what I'm saying? I learned a lot from being around him. Um, maybe a lot of those things were what not to do. I learned some things to do too, you know? And, and, and so how can I be mad about that? I'm not mad about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't, I don't hold on to things anymore. Yeah. I think you reach a certain either mentality, age, whatever you want to call it, maybe evolution of where you're at, where you're just like, this type of perception is not really serving me. My, my oldest is 14. I have 12, six and four, all boys. And my 14 year old. So like, I, I didn't actually meet my biological father and it was by mistake until I was 30. I actually met him when I was 12, uh, by accident. We had a six month relationship kind of drifted I didn't meet him again, and it was by total random. It was actually the Starbucks in Creve Coeur off Olive. Mm-hmm. He came in for a morning coffee. I was there, and, well, here we are 15 years later. We have a, we have a relationship. My 14-year-old is now at that age where he's asking me a lot of questions about my childhood, mm-hmm. you know, like the guys who are in and out, my mom and drinking and alcohol and all mm-hmm. kinds of crazy things. And I've told him things, and he always says this. He's like, I feel so bad for you. And I'm like, why? Mm-hmm. Don't. I don't. Well, I was here- like, same as you. I'm like, this is serving me now. That's right. right. Yeah. That's why you're holding them to a standard now and you're taking the job serious. Yeah. Like if that, if all of that hadn't have happened to you, who you may have been the same, but I seriously doubt it. Oh, I doubt it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that goes for people. I observe that, um, like a, almost like an every other generation thing. If you kind of look at most families, you'll have a generation of where it's like, fucked up yeah right and then you'll have a generation where it's kind of like by the by the book Mm -hmm. then you'll have another generation where it's fucked up right and it kind of flip-flops back and forth and back and forth because you know when things are 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 not good we understand they're not good and we want to make them better but when things are good we don't understand that they're not good right you see what i'm saying we don't have the perspective so then we take it for granted and then things get loose and wild and they you know what i mean yeah and then and then the next, you know what I'm saying? And it, I, I seem to yeah. observe, it, it, it's very common in business. I see that a lot in business. And I see it a lot in, in and I think families too. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know you, you know, that's the last thing you would ever want for your kids. But, uh, you know, you have to, if you're aware of that ahead of time, you know, you can help coach that out. Well, know? that's why I'm trying to strike a balance between good parenting and sabotaging them at the same mm-hmm. time. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You know, so getting back to, and I've heard you say it on so many shows that, man, you've had to like teach so many people that have worked for you, like these life lessons. Mm-hmm. Like, it's almost like all these employees, man, like they, they don't come to first form. And, and by the way, and just to segue, your first supplement superstores, wasn't that off mid rivers? No, my first one was in Springfield, Missouri. Springfield. Okay. Yeah. Did you ever actually work at the location in mid rivers yeah. like yourself? Oh yeah. Okay. Because I remember, I mean, this is going, I mean, I've lived in St. Louis yeah. my whole life. I remember buying supplements from Atilio's. Yep. And I remember when you took over. Yep. And I was jogging my memory and I was like, man, I was like, I remember coming home from college and going into supplement superstores and I'm almost positive that Andy used to be there. Like I'm yeah. almost positive. I, so, yeah. yeah. There was a time, there actually was a time where I had to work there for a, for a while because I had a whole, I had three guys all quit at the same time. Okay. Yeah. And leave me with zero, zero staff. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, man, uh, I put in plenty of hours. Out yeah. There. Yeah. That, that's going back away. Yeah. So yeah. That was, uh, cause I was, I was talking about that was probably 2006. Yeah. 2006, 2007. Yeah. It was yeah. probably then. Cause we used to go to Atelier's all the time. That's what mm-hmm. it was before. Yeah. Then. But anyway, to segue into, you know, 
you've got like the millennials, you got these kids in their twenties, you know, even kids who are probably like 18, 19 oh, yeah. years old. And you mentioned like, man, like some of the life lessons I've got to teach these guys. And if you look at fatherless homes, if you look at some of the things that these kids are up against that, how they're growing up, what are some of the things that have been presented to you through these, what these kids are going through, how they look at life. And you're like, man, we got to, not only are you going to work for me and I'm going to create this, we're going to create this environment for you to be an employee here, but I'm going to teach you some life lessons here. Are there any life lessons that have really emerged of like, if you could give the dads of today advice of like, dude, like, Hey, have your finger on these things right here, because this is what I see in some of my employees. Yeah. I think the biggest thing, and I think we're seeing it right now in society is lack of, of, of uh, masculine leadership. I think it's a big problem. Um, I think there's a big problem with an entire generation of people that have been taught to be quiet and be polite and, and not stand for things and just kind of go with the flow. And um, if you hadn't noticed, uh, men are under attack. A little bit. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Um, I would yeah. say if you're a, a man and you have, you know, children, whether they're boys or girls, uh, you need to start setting an example for what, it, for what it looks like to stand up for yourself and stand up for what's right and not go along with just everything that, that is dictated to you. Because the people dictating things to you don't all, always have the best interests of men in mind. And um, I think for a long time, I think for the last 20 years or so, uh, men have started to, we've sort of politely and passively allowed people to sort of, you know, we thought, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. That's fair. We'll let, we'll let that go. That's no big deal. We understand. And we've kind of thought, oh, it's not worth the argument, you know? And now we have a, a real situation in society right now where um, we have a whole entire generation of people on the streets screaming and yelling about shit that they don't know anything about. And I think that's a big problem. And I think that comes from failed parenting strategies. I mean, when you tell kids that that everything's fair and everything's equal and everything's this and everything's that, and it isn't really that way, what happens whenever they're let out loose in real society? They throw a temper they tantrum. A fit, yeah. That's right. And we see people laying down in traffic or shooting each other and doing all this crazy shit. That really comes from bad parenting. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, my biggest lesson that I try to teach the people here is, is stand up for what's right, no matter what it costs you. I think that's a big deal. And I don't think that's been taught for the last 20 years. I agree with you. In fact, my oldest, uh, so I have a 12 year old. He's, he's athletic football, confident kid, also humble kid. Yeah. Uh, but he'll challenge you mm -hmm. and I, and he's stubborn and I, and he's competitive and I, my wife and I always say, I was like, I love and hate that about him. Mm -hmm. Like he is ferocious about what he believes in and what Good. he stands for, even to his demise, right? Sometimes. Yeah. And now here's the challenge with my 14 year old. My four, my 14 year old is a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, he wants to do good. He hates being in trouble. And the, so how I parent my 12 year old is actually different than my 14 year old. So mm -hmm. I tell my 14 year old, I'm like, look, if you disagree with me or somebody else, speak up mm -hmm. like, and do it in a respectful way. Right. Like dad, I don't know if I, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. You know, don't, don't tell me to like right. you know, go screw myself right, or something right, like right. that. Right. Right. But like, you know, if you are in a situation where there's peer pressure or there's this or there's that, and you believe a certain way, don't be a yes man. I agree. In fact, I even tell him, I'm like, it's okay for you to get in trouble every now and again. Yeah, it is. Like it's okay for you to act out yeah. every now and again. Mm -hmm. Like, cause I feel like, He's the type of kid, and I, I love him to death, but if I don't coach that out of him, my, one of my biggest fears is he's, as he becomes a teenager is he's going to let that first girlfriend just walk all over him. Yeah, right? and sometimes you need that to learn a couple things. Yeah, yeah that, you do. that happened to me. Yeah. You know, that happened to me a few times before I figured it out. So I, uh, I totally understand that. Yeah. Um, I wasn't always the same way I am now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I, got, I got walked all over, too. Uh, by all different kinds of people until I realized that nobody was going to do anything for me until I did it for myself. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what I've been observing in the world is, is, is pretty disturbing to me uh, in terms of the, the temper tantrum thrown by a certain generation of kids, you know, that have never had any kind of accountability They've, told, they've been told that they were winners their whole lives. They've been told that they were going to win. They've been told they deserve to win. None of that shit's true. 
The real world doesn't reward that, you know, and it's still not rewarding it no matter how many buildings you burn or how many rocks you throw or how many other people you hurt or how many cops you shoot or this, whatever. It doesn't, it's still not going to change. The world rewards people that accept responsibility and fix the problem. That's it. And you're going to earn whatever it is you have. Nobody's giving you shit. And we've, you know, we've bowed to a a political agenda in terms of how to raise our children for the last 20 years or so. We've let the Pledge of Allegiance come out of the schools. We've been, we've had all these different things happen, this politically correct culture, and, you know, look what it's caused. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't surprise me. I've been talking about this on my show for, for the last six years. Right. I knew it was coming. So... You know, when you when you let people think that there's no accountability and they don't have to take responsibility for their own lives, this is what you get. And I think that should be a wake up call to all the dads listening right now. So how how do you th- how might we as fathers hold our kids accountable and we strike that balance between hey, I love you, I care about you, but there's going to be some tough love from time to time. There's going to be I'm I'm going to hold you to a standard because I care. Well, I mean, dude, you got to recalibrate the way you look at love, right? Mm-hmm. Like here's how I look at it. Like a lot of people think love is being like nice and polite. That's not love, man. Love is the truth. Mm-hmm. You know, do you want your kids to struggle? Do you want them to be the kid that's out in the street throwing a temper tantrum? Or do you want them to be a productive member of society? Someone who can provide for themselves, provide for their families, uh, be an example to others. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, um, I mean, if you care, obviously the choice is going to be B. And to produce that, you have to, instill a certain level of understanding that nobody's going to give you anything. You know what I mean? Like all of these people that are freaking out right now, they, they're under the assumption that even if they get what they want, that, that things are going to change for them. It's actually will change. It'll get worse for them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, uh, it's dangerous, man. Um, it's got me concerned. That's for sure. Oh yeah. 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 I want to go back to masculine energy Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of dads out there that don't really understand what that means. Mm-hmm. So what is, what does masculine energy mean to you? You know, look, fundamentally men and women are different. Mm-hmm. Um, it's biologically, psychologically, there's roles for both. And to me, the role of the male has been diluted and discounted to the point where it's, it's, it's not wanted anymore. Um, you know, women are independent. Women are powerful. Women are strong. They, they're the equal of men now. And that's fine. You can be the equal of men, but men still serve an important role in, in society. And uh, this passive attitude of, you know, I mean, dude... They're letting kids decide their genders at four years old. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, we've gone way too far Mm -hmm. with, like, letting things go for sake of, like, wanting to keep the peace. Mm -hmm. And and I see this, you know, to say what masculinity is, I you know, I'm not the guy to say masculine. I know what it isn't. You know what I mean? Not Being a man isn't toxic masculinity, you know? I'm, I'm, I've been, this, this year's been very interesting to me, um, I've learned a lot about what people really think. And one of the things that is disturbing to me is, is how people perceive any kind of thought that they don't agree with, you know, coming from a a man Mm -hmm. as toxic. You know, I was told the other day that my beard was toxic masculinity at its finest (laughs) quote from the internet. Your beard is toxic masculinity. at the What does that even mean? Bro, I don't know. (laughs) The people have lost their minds. It's insanity. And, you know, we have to be self-reliant people. We have to know how to do things. Right. Like, think about, you know, what the men today don't know how to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They don't know how to take care of their home. They don't know how to do basic construction things. They, I'm not saying you have to know that, but, like, nobody knows it. It's just weird, dude. We've gone to this place that I, I almost feel like I don't belong. Like it is, it's weird to me. So I don't know the answer to like what masculinity is, but I know that being a man and being who we are and liking what we like and it's okay. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. 
and we shouldn't feel guilty about it and we shouldn't feel embarrassed about it or we shouldn't feel like we have to be quiet and because we're men. That's to me that's a ridiculous thing and and it's a dangerous thing. I think it's very dangerous. Yeah, it's yeah. removing yeah. And a very important part of the social dynamic of our culture and it shows right now. Mm-hmm. You know, especially the guys in our age range, the guys from 30 to 45 years old or so. We we screwed up, dude. Maybe not you, maybe not me, but we as a whole, we've we've dropped the ball. I agree. And there's there's another element here at play too, especially when it comes to fathers. There was a guy on social media in in our in our group on social on Facebook. He put this this meme up. And it was a man who had his arms out like this, like he was being crucified and he had the home of his family on his shoulders and the mom was up there like embracing the kid. And it says, it said something along the lines of uh, the, the unhappy life that a father settles for and the sacrifice for the well being of his kids. And then there were all these comments like, yeah. And not only that, but he should be walking through shit at the same time. Like all these really negative comments. And I chimed in on that and I was like, I'm sorry, but I'm challenging this. Like, if you're at the bottom of that, holding up that house and you're miserable, that's your fault. Mm -hmm. Like, that's you can be supporting your family, but also in the window of that home with them versus, like, being quietly miserable. I think the whole whole meme's wrong. Yeah. I think the meme should be the man at the top lifting the house and the family. So there you go. That's how it should be. Pulling them up. Right. Um, Look, man. You caught me at an interesting time. I'm pretty pissed off at men right now, to be completely honest. Okay. Um, Let's go there. Yeah. I just think that, dude, I don't know how else to say it, dude. Um, I think men have become total pussies. And I don't know how else to say it. I know you like to keep the language to a minimum, <laughs> but I don't know how else to yeah. say it. Uh, you know, we've let society beat us into submission. And, and dude, I've ta- I, like you, I talked to hundreds and hundreds of men. And while there might be the occasional person who's like, no, I don't agree with that. Most men, when you get them on the side, they're like, yeah, dude, I'm, I don't, I'm not down with this either. You know what I mean? And we all know it's not right, but why are we quiet? We're quiet because we don't want to argue with the, the crazy person who thinks this stuff because it's a waste of our time. But when we keep pushing the argument off for the waste of our time, look what happens. It takes over. And now it's almost like, it, dude, it's almost like the traditional male is like hated in a lot of the culture. And I, <clears throat> you know, I'm not going to be down with it no matter what. So. Yeah. We call it the, the drift. Yeah. Oh, well, that's probably part of it anyway. And you yeah. know, the drift is the wash, rinse, repeat that I think a lot of dads are on. Mm-hmm. They wake up, go to the same job. Most of them, I think it's 82% of people hate what they do. Mm-hmm. Most 82% of men hate what they do. You know, they're, they're short on patience. Mm-hmm. Everything is fine good, mm-hmm. busy. It's mm-hmm. like our three favorite things to say. How's mm-hmm. life? Fine. How's work? Good. Yeah. What have you been up to? I'm oh, just busy, man. Yeah. And all the while we're, we're not getting our needs met. We're not even, we're not even asking for what it is that we want, what we need, what we yeah. desire. We're not communicating. It's almost like be quiet, provide, be quietly miserable. And if you speak up about what you need, you'll probably be rejected. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. Um, I, I don't know the solution to all of it, but I, I know that for some reason, my, and that's my theory, what I just said a minute ago, I feel like, you know, that there's been an organized effort to force men into almost submission in terms of what it is we should be doing, how we should be, how we should look, how we should act, what kind of words we should use. And if anything's outside of that norm, we're labeled like a toxically masculine person, which is total BS. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, guys, uh, you're biologically different than women. Yeah. Okay? You have a different chemical makeup. We like different shit. And guess what? That's okay. You know? And it's weird, too, because I see these guys on the internet almost like trying to be women. Like not, not, they're not like, and, and I'm not like, this isn't a LGBTQ thing. Like if that's your thing, cool. I'm cool with that. Mm-hmm. I'm just talking about a, a, a man that's, that has kids is trying to be the right kind of man. Um, 
it's not popular to be right now, mm-hmm. you know? And I feel like a lot of people have a hard time, A, recognizing that, and B, knowing what to do to correct it. When really, I think what needs to be happening is people, you know, you know, do your kids watch what you do or do they listen to what you say? Watch what I do. That's right. Yeah. And so, you know, if you're the dad who's sitting there at home, you know, bitching about all these things and then, and then just, you know, going along with them, when it goes out, they're going to see that. You know what I mean? So I, I think we have a duty to stand up for what we believe and not sit here and be like, oh, well, that's just society these days. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. We have a duty to fight it, man. And, and uh, I think what – I can tell you this for sure because I've already started fighting this for a while. You guys who are, like, sitting there and you're thinking, like, yeah, you know, like, I should do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, do it. Because what's going to happen is all the people around you are going to start waking up too, and they're going to follow you, and they're going to see you as a leader. It's going to make your life better, not worse. And yeah, you might get the um, crazy, you know, PC police on you once in a while who might say something to you. So what? So what? Dude, you're not that weak to where some words from some stranger is going to fucking hurt you. Well, not only that, but the people who are usually making those comments are usually so bitter about their own life. They're just trying to Dude, look, bring bring you down as well. You know. The whole, the whole uh, attack is based around shame. Mm-hmm. Every, all the attacks right now are social pressure-based, shame-based. If you stop feeling shame because you know it's not true, no matter what they say, it becomes a real easy solution. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't care. You say, call me whatever you want. I don't care. Right. It is what it is. I know what I'm about. My people know what I'm about. My family knows what I'm about. Outside of that... Say whatever you want. I don't give a shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's I think that's something that if we can all just come to terms with, it makes the decision of what to do and how to do it pretty easy. Mm-hmm. You know, but we do these things. It's just like, you know, I think the internet has reverted people back to junior high school. <laughs> you know? Uh, <laughs> a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Bit, yeah, like, yeah, like you don't, bit. oh, I don't want to say this because, you know, Susie over there at the other lunch table, she might, I might not look cool to her. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So now it's Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And, you know, it's like, oh, I don't want to do that. Well, then, then, then don't say it and just live it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you don't have to, like, go on the internet and tell everybody that I'm a, I'm a, you know, everybody likes to say this now, I'm a lion. Like, you don't have to do that <laughs> shit. Like, dude, just go live it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of dads listening right now and they're like, they're, they're hearing what I'm saying and they're saying, they're shaking their head. Yeah. They're like, dude, I'm fucking sick of it too. You know what I mean? And, um, we as men need to band together to protect men. <laughs> you know, I, I never thought I would say something like that, but it's the truth. Like men are, are atta- constantly, constantly, constantly attacked in every way in our marketing, in our media, in social media, everything. Like it's ant, like, dude, you know, if I post a picture doing something that someone thinks is manly, like say like lifting weights, I like to lift weights, you know, it's, like, like, dude, like you said, like, you're like, oh, dude, you look good. You're, you know, getting in shape. But dude, right. I post those pictures after I work out. You know how many people I get in there that are sick? Because I have a very moderate uh, audience. I have mm-hmm. middle of the road. I have, uh, I don't have any far left people anymore because they all left. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> but, done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I have a lot of middle people, uh, mostly middle people. And I have some right wing people uh, uh, that listen to my show. Um <clears throat> But I'm pretty moderate. Like, I'm very socially liberal. Like, you, I'm sort of like, hey, do whatever you want to do, mm-hmm. but I'm going to do what I want to do, too. Right. You know? And, and uh, people have a hard time accepting that. Like, if you don't go along with their agenda, then you're anti them. No, I'm not. I'm just like, hey, that's your deal. Right. Like, it's your life. I'm not, I'm not anti. I'm not anti you. I'm just me. That's right. That's what it is. Exactly. And so people have a hard time with that. So that, you know, the minute you start saying something, it doesn't align with what they want you to say. They leave. And that's fine. That's their loss yeah. because I think we should all surround ourselves with people of different perspectives so that we can gain more perspective. Um, but, you know, I get people that look at, they say those photos, I get comments like, oh, dude, I can only imagine what it's like to live with you. You're probably like a Neanderthal. <laughs> it's like, dude, what are you, what are you doing? Because I like to lift weights. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I like to take care of myself. I like to eat. Like, what, what are we doing in the world? Like, I mean, dude, what do you think? Like, don't you think, I know we're talking about dad stuff, but no, shit's right. crazy, man. Yeah. No, in fact, uh, so I'm doing 75 hard. Yeah. Uh, this is the second time I've done it. And 
You look fucking good. Dude. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. It's you know the, these these rules, man. They're they're legit. They're yeah. good. But yeah, every time I post like a progress pic, yeah, there will be somebody who will be like, "You're showing off," like literally a comment, Bro. and I'm like. I'm just like, hey, I'm just like, this is like, I'll actually show you the photo. Like, Bro, I get it. Yeah. When, when I was 350, I was, it was, dude, you're such a fat ass. Yeah. Now that I'm in good shape, it's, oh, dude, what do you, you got to show off every day? Yeah. It's like, you were the same guy saying this four years ago. Right. What, you know, like you just had, like, and really that's been good for me. Because I've really seen and learned firsthand that there's just no way to please people. No, no, there's not. Yeah. Like, and, the, and the more you try, I mean, I, you're just going outside of, think, what, obviously, you, you're going outside your core values. That's what, right. What, and the more are. you try, the, the more you lose the respect for the people that actually respect you for who you are. Right. You know? And and so, dude, I get it, man. It's... it's so, that was 45 yeah, that's days crazy, ago. dude. And, yeah, I mean, I was... Yeah, I you're was, killing it. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Thank you. I The thing was, man, is that... He, and I, and That's I def- awesome, dude. Thank you. And I definitely want to get to the 75 hard yeah. because here's the thing. I was actually having a conversation. Actually, you'll, you'll love to hear this. So we have – I know you, you're good friends with Mickler. I'm good mm-hmm. friends with Mickler. He's got Iron he's such a such a stud. Yeah, he's cool. I love that guy. I like, I like, yeah, I love Ryan. Uh, so we have Dad Edge Mastermind, and we have almost 500 guys who do life with us. And me and one other guy who've been doing it for, gosh, four, four or five years now – we're like, hey, man. He calls me up. He's like, hey, man, uh, you up for the 75 hard again? Because I did it last year. Yeah. And I was like, I'm down for that. Let's yeah. do it. Let's yeah. do it. Because I think, I think every guy needs a battle, mm-hmm. you know, from time to time. And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm ready to do something again. Let's do it. And he's like, should we open this up to the whole mastermind? I'm like, I don't know how many people are going to want to do it. But, yeah, we'll yeah. see. 100 people. That's awesome. So it started at like 92 people, and then we had guys kind of inch in, and we're like, all right. And we yeah. we did it actually the way we did it. 100 people, we created our own group. We have an Excel spreadsheet with 100 tabs on it, everybody's name. And it's all got all five rules, you know, and you have to update it every single day that you did it. That's and awesome. everyone is also teamed up with one accountability partner. That's awesome. So everybody knows who they're yeah. working with and all that. So, and you're required to post your photo, your progress pic, Every Monday. And we do a bi-weekly sort of group Zoom call, you know, for accountability and questions and all that good stuff. And here's one of the coolest things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we added in one more rule. And we didn't tell the guys until on day one when we started. We're like, oh, hey, by the way, there's one more rule. And it's on the Excel spreadsheet. 75 days, no porn. All right. And, and all the guys are like, wait, what? <laughs> like, I didn't know that. Yeah. You know, so that was hilarious. Bro, that's a but, hard one for dude, a lot of guys. Dude, that's like yeah. everyone says that's yeah. the hardest one. Yeah. So everyone's doing that. But here's. here's but you know what? That'll make your sex life better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what guys are saying. Yeah. They're dude, like, 75 hard period will do that. Yeah. That's a huge benefit yeah. no one talks about. It is. Yeah. I, I didn't tell you this actually, going off on another tangent here. But so when I did 75 hard last year, my testosterone was eight. 20 mm-hmm. and then i had it done after and it was 960 yeah and i was like holy crap that's yeah. awesome but yeah so hormonally it, it worked out really yeah. well but here's here's what i'll tell well, I you i think dude i think like not trying to interrupt no, but stay on that st- subject i'm not going to get like into the sex thing but like what it comes down to really is the confidence you have in yourself through the yeah. program a lot of people hearing this that haven't done it and they're thinking well yeah you probably have more sex when you're in better shape that's true that's not what i'm talking about what i'm talking about is you become confident and proud of who you are to a point where it reflects in all areas. And when I say all areas, I mean all areas. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's a, that you have to almost experience that. I know you know what I'm talking about yeah. if you did the program, but uh, it's a powerful thing. It's extreme. It's simple. Mm hmm. And it's hard, mm-hmm. right? The rules give you those really good boundaries to, to live life within. But I was talking to my accountability partner who, you know, he and I started. We're like, okay, who wants to do it? hundred guys came forward and we did it. So last night, you know, we had our 45-day sort of check-in. We check in with each other about once a week. And I'm like, hey, man, like, how are you feeling? He's like, I'm pretty tired, you know. And he's like, I'm, I'm feeling the, the mental fatigue of this. I was like, I am too. I was like, but let's talk about the benefits. Let's talk about the benefits of this. And he's, I was like, why, why are you doing this? And he told me his why. He's like, well, why are you? And I was like, you know, to be honest, I wanted to experience fun without alcohol again. And not that I was a huge drinker before, but on the weekends I'd drink. You know, I actually, I was on day five for my 17th wedding anniversary. My wife was drinking and I wasn't. I was like, wow, this is really hard. Yeah. But the thing that I've noticed, I was like, I'm more, 
I, I said this the first time we did 75 hard, and I'll say it again. The physical transformation is the bonus. Everything else that goes into it, I'm more intentional with my kids. I'm more patient with my kids. I have a better relationship with my wife. I, it's like every day I'm putting that cookie in the cookie jar that I did another day. That's right. I did another Your day. Your stock's going up. Yeah, it's like it's building that resilience. And here's the cool thing. When you're a dad and you have kids, especially kids that are very aware of what you're doing, my kids know full well what the 75 hard is. Mm -hmm. And my 14-year-old is running cross country right now. And he loves running at night. And so last week he asked me, he's like, hey, dad, did you hit your second workout today already? And I'm like, yeah, I did. He's like, oh, I was hoping you'd run with me. I was like, I'll run with you. Yeah. He's like, aren't you tired? And I'm like, I'm tired. We'll go. Yeah. Let's go do it. That's awesome, dude. So I love it. We get out there and we're running. And we had a talk like the whole time. He's me trying to keep up with him because he's fast. I'm like, and I'm not a runner. Yeah. And so I'm running with him. He's like, he's like, dad, like, aren't you wanting to like give up like don't you miss like having a drink with mom he's like you, we had cake the other night you didn't have any cake like don't you miss like pizza and all this? i'm like sure yeah i do and he's like well why are you doing it i well don't you want to give up i was like anything hard sure you want to give up i was like i'm finishing this thing there's not one doubt in my mind that i'm going to get to day 75 yeah and that's the way i'm going to do it that's right and he's like but you could have said no to doing this run with me. And you said, yes, that's three workouts. I was like, it's not about getting that second workout. I, I want to hang out with you. Yeah. I was like, so I'm willing to do that. But the cool thing is, is they, you, you asked earlier, do your kids listen to what you say or they watch what you do? And we've, I've really leveraged this experience, this 75 hard, this go around as look what you can do when you don't give up mm -hmm. and look at what you can do when everybody else is going along with the crowd. We're going to the Lake of the Ozarks this weekend and we're going to be on a boat and it's going to be my kids, my wife, her friends, and this other, this other guy that we're friends with. And the guy told my wife, I can't believe Larry's not drinking. This sucks. Like I wish he would just have a drink. And, and my, and my kids heard that they're like, you're going to drink this weekend. I'm like, Nope. And they're like, but everybody's going to be drinking. I was like, I don't care. Yeah. But dude, yeah. The, here's the thing. So like four or five years ago, I I would have heard that and been like, oh yeah, man, that does suck, right? Yeah. But I don't hear when you tell me that, like you can see it on my face. I'm getting more excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, yeah. dude, and you you understand why, I know you do. Because every time on this program you get to this place, <clears throat> everybody does. And you will struggle. It's going to be hard. I'm on day 47 myself. Oh, nice. So we're right there. Yeah, we're, yeah right there. So, and I'm, I'm kind of feeling it too. I'm not mentally right now. I'm, mentally, I feel good. Physically, I'm beat, man. Because this is my second time this year I've done it. Mm -hmm. So I am beat up, but I like it. And every time someone, like last night, I went to Billy G's for uh, one of my best friend's uh, daughter's birthday party. Everybody's drinking. Everybody's eating pizza. Everybody's eating this. Everybody's doing that. And like every time I see these dudes taking a drink or taking a bite, dude, my strength is building. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's almost like, like uh, Thanos. Like you're 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 take. They're doing their bad, and it's giving you strength. Yeah. You know, it's weird, man. Yeah. Um. But man, every, you you already know that you're gonna go to the lake. You're not gonna drink. You're going to do what you need to do, and you're going to come back better. And mentally, that's going to deposit so much strength into your brain. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And, dude, I've, yep. I've just started to become addicted to that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where, where it used to be I was addicted to the fun time. Now I'm addicted to the strength. Like yeah. I'm getting a superpower every single time I deny one of these uh, pleasures that I'm trying. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And so you get addicted yeah. to building the discipline. I don't know, man. I will never go back. I know that. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll be doing the Live Hard program um, every year till I die. If I don't do it, somebody comes smack the shit out of me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because uh, it's made my life so much better. And, yeah. and that's not me plugging the program. It makes no difference to me if people do it or not. I know I'm going to be doing it. Right. Well, the funny thing is, is... I think that's badass, dude. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. But since I've gone down this road... And we actually, me and my accountability partner, uh, when we did it last year, we did a whole podcast on our experience mm -hmm. on it. We, we published it on our on our channels. One thing I noticed when we did this go around, a bunch of guys like day 10, 14, you know, dude, this is so hard. This is awful. like, I can't believe I can't drink. I no porn and I, I'm sticking to this diet. And I, my, my response was just wait till about day 20. Yeah, that's if right. You, if you get to like day 20. I agree. You get like, you're like. 
I don't remember when I had a temptation now anymore. In fact, now I'm feeling like this, like the speed and the yeah. growth. And I'm, you get to I'm, start getting that momentum. Yeah, you get momentum, you get confidence, and you're like, okay, now I'm in the groove. Then I think you, so last year when we did 75 hard, we ended, it was on Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. And me and my accountability partner were like, should we just finish the year? Yeah. So we went 25 days. That's awesome, yeah, dude. Yeah, 25 more days. We had our first drink on December 31st. So we That's actually awesome. did we actually did 100. We're like, well, yeah. we did we came this far. Might as well just, yeah. just go to the end of I the year. I did that this year. Did you? So, yeah, I went uh I went 100 and, uh, like 122 days. I just started stretching it out because I I started on March 5th or March 9th this year. And I told everybody I was like, dude, you know what? Cuz that was right when the lockdown started happening. Yeah. I'm like, that's fine. I'm going to make this the time that I look back on my life and say, dude, that's when I got the best I've ever been. And here I am. It's uh, the middle of September, literally in the best shape I've ever been, making the most money I've ever made. Business is the best it's ever been. Family's the best it's ever been. Friends are the best it's ever been. And, and yeah, I'm mad about what's going on in society right now. But if I like look at my personal, like my actual life, it's awesome. Yeah. And yeah. when you guys see me online, those of you that do follow me and you see me and you see me, like I said, Andy's really mad. Yeah. I'm, I'm not mad at me, dude. I'm mad at everybody else, yeah. you know, but, uh, but yeah, bro, it's, I decided to take this this year or, and I intend on keeping going. Like I'm going to keep going until we get rid of all the BS, you know, when, when everything goes back to what it was a year ago from today, we're not wearing freaking masks and we're not, you know, dealing with all this propaganda and all this crazy stuff, then maybe I'll have a, a tequila. You know what I'm there saying? You know, yeah. But, uh, you know, and, and if that happens tomorrow and t- it's day 48 to 75 hard, I'm going to tell you right now I'm having tequila. <laughs> so I'm celebrating when they repeal, when this shit goes, when people yeah. finally stand up and say enough's enough, we're done with this and we go back to being America. I will celebrate that. And if it's in the middle of one of my programs, so be it. Yeah. That is the only thing I will break it for. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing too, like 2020 has been. But I only say that because I've already completed it once this year. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. If, so, don't, don't follow my lead on that. <laughs> I'm finishing no yeah, matter yeah, what. Yeah. yeah. We, we've got 100 guys with that. No, I get it. But, I might be um, talking a little shit there. Cause <laughs> like, like it, that day might come and I might be like, yeah, I might show up and not drink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Cause like, dude, I am addicted to it. I'm yeah. addicted to the progress, man. Um, it's made me a better human. It's made me a better man. It's made me a better, uh, business partner. It's made me a better, uh, leader here. And I'm addicted to that, man. I just feel like I'm getting better and better and better and better and better every single day. And when you get to a point where you're the best you ever were in your life, which is where I'm at now, dude, I wake up every day and I'm like, Today, I'm actually going to be better than I was yesterday, and yesterday was the best I've ever been. Right. Dude, this is the first time in my life I've ever been at that point. You know, a lot of people, you know, dude, I'm, I'm 41. I'm at the best I've ever been. That's crazy. And so I'm, like, sort of addicted to it. You know what I'm saying? Well, so you don't, you don't want to take that step back. No. You got, you got momentum. Yeah, yeah, and I don't want to mess it up. Yeah, don't stop the train. Yeah, and, yeah. and uh, that feels good, man. Yeah. You know, it really does. And I can tell you're, you're getting it too, man. Uh, I can feel it on you. Oh, thanks. Yeah, man. the energy's right. It is. It's yeah. it's been, and like I said, for for me, like a lot of the fuel has been number one. We've got one hundred guys doing it with us. Yeah. Number two, I love, I love actually seeing my boys see me tired. Oh yeah. You know, especially at night, I always tell them I'm like, hey man, come nine o'clock. You know, dad's pretty smoked out. Yeah. Like, I'm tired. Yeah. Because you know, we, I get up every day five fifteen in the gym by five forty five, and. uh but and and I love when they ask me, well, why don't you just stop? I'm like, no, no, I'm not gonna stop. I'm not gonna quit. No, dude, it's about honoring commitment. Yeah, for real. Yeah, that's man shit. So like, I might have, you know, I might say what I just said, but I don't, I don't really know that my my, I don't know that my inner boss voice, and if you you know, if you know 75 hard, you know mm-hmm. what the boss voice is, would allow me to even have that drink. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Well, it's probably got, that got you to 122 days. Yeah. So. Well, man, as we as we wrap up here, I want to just uh, so the what's the so explain what the Live Hard program is too. So the Live so seventy five hard is just the boot camp, all right. So the live 
And this is where a lot of people really, I'm, I'm kind of bitter about it, to be completely honest, because the 75 hard's gotten so popular that it's become like this challenge on the internet. And that it's is everywhere. That is not what it is. <laughs> uh, so we have a lot of people doing it for the wrong reasons. And, and I understand that, you know, it's cool right now, but this isn't, I'm going to be doing this way, way after it's become uncool. Okay. Because it works. Um, so 75 hard is kind of like, I got you in. Right. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. so it's the first 75 days. It's, it's a big adjustment for most people. Uh, like you said, the first 20 days are pretty brutal, especially if you've been inactive. Mm -hmm. Uh, but after 20 days, you know, you're going to get used to the pain. Your feet are probably going to hurt pretty bad. Um, but you're going to feel good mentally and you start to get what this is about. But um, so the Live Hard program is a four phase program. So there's 75 hard, which is the first phase. Um, and then there's phase one after that. Mm -hmm. All right. And phase one after that is, is uh, 30 days. Okay. And you can do it right after 75 hard. You can go straight into it if you want, which I personally believe the easiest way to do it is to do it just to continue in. Uh, you, you said you went 100 days. I, I yeah. think you would agree with that. It's yeah. just easier to do right afterwards and keep the momentum. And basically, that adds in a couple extra elements. Um, cold shower. Yeah, cold shower. <laughs> uh, I actually love the cold yeah. shower. You know, uh, some people have a hard time with it. I hated it at first, but now I really like it. And the, the reason I really do like it is because if I do it first thing in the morning, it makes me feel like I've been up two or three hours right away. Um, and if I do it at night before I go to bed, it actually helps me sleep better. Mm -hmm. So that helps a lot. Um, and then there's, there's some other aspects to it. I, if you want to learn all about it, you can just go to 75 hardcom But basically there's a phase two, okay? And between phase one and phase two, you have to have a 30-day mandatory break. Now that doesn't mean you have to stop working out. It doesn't mean you have to stop doing what is you've done during 75 hard. It means it doesn't count towards the program. And then in phase two, when it starts, it's basically another 30 days of what was originally in 75 hard, okay? And the reason for that break is this. It's easy to be disciplined when there's a program to follow. Mm -hmm. when, there, when you're not on a program, what do you do, right? Just, you can go off the rails. That's right. right? Yeah. That's right. And so what, what it's designed to teach you is that it's easier to clean your house a little bit every day yeah. than it is to let it become a wreck and yeah. have to clean the whole thing. Yeah. And because when most people go off of the program, they go back to some of these old habits. They might maintain some of the habits, but not all of them. And then when they have to go back on the program on phase two, after that 30 day break, it's, it's kind of a slap in the face. Mm -hmm. I actually think phase two is the hardest part, even though it's the least restrictive part. Uh, and then there's phase three, Okay, and phase three is the last 30 days before your year anniversary of that 75 hard. And the reason that it's the last 30 days is because if you fail, you fail the year. So you've just wasted a whole year of, of work. So like phase three is really the test, right? Like, are you going to, have you developed anything or haven't you? Right. And, um, you know, it's sort of like uh Iron Man, an Iron Man for your brain is how I like to think of it. Like if you, if you complete the live hard, you know, that's a big accomplishment for your life. Uh, I did it last year and obviously that was the first year it existed officially. Uh, and I'm very proud of that. And I think anybody who, who did yeah. it is very proud. And even if you complete only 75 hard, you're going to be proud of it. It's a big accomplishment. Uh, and some people don't go and do the whole live hard program. I think you're really missing out on a lot of benefits if you don't, but uh, but you know, everybody's going to do their own thing. Right. Uh, but it's a four phase program designed for a whole calendar year. And it's designed that way because dude, we need tune ups. We need calibrations. You know what I mean? We, we, the way life works and the way that we work, um, mentality wise is we get sharp when we, when we practice and when we don't practice those skills diminish. So it's a year long program. It's designed to keep you in check mentally and physically and in life. And, um, you know, I plan on doing it every single year until I'm dead, Yeah. you know, and, uh, it's just made my life dramatically better in every single way. There's not one negative it's brought to me, not one, you know, I don't have fear of missing out. Yeah. There wasn't a crazy party that I missed that I'm like, oh man, the benefits have been so much greater brother that like, I, whatever it, it would be worth 10 times the pain, yeah. what I've gotten out of it. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're interested in, in, in getting better, you know, obviously dude, it's hard for me to say this because it's my program and I don't like being the guy. It's like, yeah, we're the best, blah, blah, blah. But the results speak for themselves yeah. man, with everybody and anybody right. who's really done it, you know, you know, you do, yeah. you do. It's, and I love that, that it's a mental tune up. Plus I think, yeah. I mean, we're talking to an audience full of fathers and That's I think, right. I think every man needs a battle. Yeah. We, we need a bit of a war. We need a yeah. challenge. And I think that keeps us sharp. It keeps us disciplined. It keeps our confidence up. And the last thing I'll dude, say, that's the biggest part right there, yeah. bro, is the confidence. Yeah. Dude, like I said, we are beat on by society so freaking hard right now. We have to have something that builds that back up for us. Right. You are not a bad, you are not bad. You guys listening right now, you are not bad because you were born with a penis. You know what I mean? And that's where we have society kind of, it's almost gotten to that point. Mm -hmm. Um, At least from my perspective, it seems like it has. And it's frustrating. And so I feel like if we're going to feel good as men, we've got to take care of that. Like we talked about taking accountability. Mm -hmm. We got to take accountability for that too. And so the big thing here, guys, the big key to this whole thing is there's two things to it. One, you're never going to have confidence until you look in the mirror and you know, that you're about what you say you're about, right? That was my biggest thing. Like, it's real good to puff up your chest and pretend to be confident. I did that for a long time, but there's a very distinct difference between being confident and appearing to be confident. Right. And for a long time, man, I was that guy. And I'm sure there's people listening right now and they're like feeling like maybe they're that guy Mm -hmm. that appears to be confident, but they don't feel right on the inside. And that's because when you look in the mirror, you know you're not living to the standard that you're presenting, right? That was me, man. That was me. Well, I feel like that's exactly what the program tunes up. That's right. It it creates that inside resilience that also shows on the outside. Yeah. So, yeah, man, I I love the program. Uh, One final thing I'll say as we wrap up here, if anybody's battling, especially the dads out there, I don't have the time. Yeah, you know, I, I run oh, man. you know, a full time full time plus business that is very demanding. I have four highly energetic boys. Yeah. I do have a social life. I have a wife. I've got every single household duty that every other man has. Like, and I get the question all the time, as I'm sure you do. Yeah. You probably get it way more than I. Like, dude, how do you how do you get everything done in a day? And I'm like, look, I just do it. Yeah. I, I actually have my two workouts done before nine AM. Yeah. Like both of them. I I, I Let hit, me ask you this. Yeah. Do you feel like if do you feel like you have more or less free time when you're on 75 hard? I feel like I actually have more me because too. because I have the discipline like time doesn't get away from me. That's right. I have so much more of a sense of urgency around like okay, I got to follow a diet, so I'm going to have these meals prepped. And if I'm going to get in the workout, if I'm going to be in the gym, I know what time I'm going to be. There's no fluff in it. There's like it maybe- requires extreme time management. It does. And if you yeah. if you let off if you let off of that time management, you will fail the program. Yeah. And the result of that allows us to actually have free time. Mm-hmm. And not only do we have the free time, we appreciate that free time. We do. So the perception of how much free time we have actually benefits from the structure of the program. I feel that way. And I've talked to thousands and thousands of men and women that agree. Um, it's it's kind of weird how that works, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And it's because I, you know, there's no sleeping in. No. You know, it's like, hey. It's not an option. I got to get up before these kids get up and get these workouts in. Yeah. Because they're going to be up and they're going to want my attention. And so, yeah, it, there's no fluff in it. There's no like, I wonder what I'm going to do tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It's like, no. I know exactly what I'm doing tomorrow because I got to mm-hmm. get all this stuff in. It forces you, it forces you forward. Yeah. It forces forward progress. You know what I mean? Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, they get to a point where they're saying, you know, gosh, man, uh, I'm really struggling. You know, I can't, I feel like I'm spinning my wheels. You know what? A lot of times you might feel like you're spinning your wheels, but if you have created structure um, what happens is, is that if you just obey the structure, you might go through a mental funk or you might go through a phase where you feel like you're not making progress, but eventually you get to a point where you kind of pull your head out, out of the clouds and you look around and you're like, Whoa, the program carried me through that. Yeah. And now I am better than, you know, and I think a lot of men struggle. I know they do, um, struggle with their production tied to their, their feelings, your feelings are irrelevant, fellas. 
And they'll, they'll change depending That's right. on what is going on, That's sometimes right. even by the minute. That's right. Yeah. Your feelings are irrelevant to your results. Your results are directly tied to what you do. Mm-hmm. So if you, can, it, it, like if you can master the art of feeling stressed but still getting your shit done, you start to become real dangerous. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because now, even when you're having a bad time, even when you're having struggles, even when you're fighting with your significant other – or you're down because maybe business, something happened, whatever it is. And you're allowed to uh, sort of absorb those feelings, but you're still getting your stuff done. Dude, that's powerful, man. Very powerful. Yeah, because yeah. now you've, you've taken your production away from your emotions and you've made it something completely, you know, that, is, that, that happens regardless, of, mm-hmm. you know. And, and that's what I've noticed for me. For me, now, you know, we might have bad news once in a while or something, you know, that's, I think that's a big misconception a lot of people have. They look and they think, oh, well, nothing bad ever happened. No, man, bad stuff happens all the time. I just don't let it affect my progress. Right. You know, and, and, and we got to, we, we, as a, as, as men, we have to eliminate our success being dependent on what's happened to us being from a reactive nature and start making it a priority no matter what's going on. You know what I mean? In fact, I think if you can execute despite whatever stress you're under, absolutely, it's like it's more of a feather in your cap. Oh, you're yeah. like, you're like, I just had the crappiest day I've had in a long time, and I still got it done. Yeah, like that. That's a it, skill, dude. It is. I mean, because you're you're only as good as your worst day. I would say that's the most powerful mm-hmm. skill a person could possess. Yeah, and and that's something that this program teaches you. You know, you you are going to suffer. Right. It's going to be hard. You're going to be like, what the fuck, you know, (laughs) and that's what it's going to be like. But at the end of it, you're going to look back and you're going to be like, dude, I made real progress. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's going to start making sense. I don't know, man. It's exciting. Like I love hearing, I love hearing about people who have gone through it and what they're gaining. You know what I mean? Because what you gain is just... (sighs) It's the most powerful thing I've ever gotten out of anything. Yeah. So. Um, and the funny thing too, with, with, especially with the alcohol thing, like the conversations that I have, yeah. like if I'm drinking like a bottle of water and be like, dude, why aren't you drinking? I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm doing 75 hard. What's that? Yeah. And then it becomes more of a topic of like, why are you doing that? Yeah. I was like, man, you just got to experience. And then you start talking exactly what we just went and talked right. about for 15 minutes. That becomes the conversation. And yeah. then what usually happens is like, I think I should try that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because what happens, you know, at first I feel like those kind of, those conversations are always interesting to me. Yeah. Because at first you get a little resistance. They'd be like, oh, I can never do that. Yeah. I got to have my drink. Well, that's cool. I understand you. I used to have, I used to be like that too. Right. And you kind of like present it like a little challenge, right? Like, cause that is a challenge, right? I used to be like that too. It's almost like saying, yeah, I used to be weak like that too, right? <laughs> and it kind of it kind of challenges guys yeah. a little bit. And you know, all of us guys like a little challenge, and and we're all competitive in our own little ways. Some of us more than others, but I think that's a good thing. I agree. That's a great thing. So like w- when those conversations happen for me, you know, I'm not put like five years ago. I would have like, oh, if you don't do it, you're a punk. You know, that's not the truth. I don't feel like that at all. It's not for you. It's not for you. It's fine, but. It's definitely for me. Yeah. And so, you know, those conversations are a little interesting. You know, they, I, yeah. I know I've had a lot of them, you know, the, the guy, oh, I can never give up that or this. Why do you do that? Well, you know, this, this, this. And they're like, really? What, what is it? Did, it? did it really make a difference? Like, and you, you know, I'm, I tell the truth, bro. You know, I'm not a superhuman person. Mm-hmm. I'm a weak person. I am a weak person who has developed the skill of being strong. And, um, I don't know, man. I, I, it's probably the most fulfilling thing I'm involved in right now. It's exciting for me. It's got, it gets me excited. I love seeing people push through. I love seeing people learn about themselves and get better. And uh, I don't know. I'm just very, very, very grateful and fortunate to be in where I'm at right now with yeah. all of this. You know what I mean? I love that authentic admission of yeah. I'm a weak person, but oh. I've developed a skill set. Yeah, bro. Like, I it's mean, the that's the truth, a, man. It is the that, truth. Makes me like you even more. You know? <laughs> Thanks, brother. You know, I, I, I'll take all of you that like me that I can get right now. I'm yeah. not real popular right now. But, uh, but, but, well, actually, I am. That's, not, that's a lie. I'm getting more popular because I'm standing for those things. Yeah. But the truth is, is uh, it's the truth. 
bro, it's the truth. Yeah. You know, I am, I am a weak, lazy, fat person on the inside. <laughs> I, I, I am. And, and uh, I, I'm so afraid of that person, like, yeah. coming back out. Right. That I'm willing to do whatever I have to do to never be that guy that yeah. I was when we first met. Right. Where, you know, I was making great money. I was doing good things in business. But the rest of my life was kind of shitty. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I wasn't happy. You know, I was going, uh, you know, dude, and for my frame, like, I'm just a big dude, you know. I'm built like a fire plug. And that's, that's what it is, you know. Um, so, like, when I was that big, brother, I, I you know, I, I didn't want to go out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't want to go be seen in public. Even though I was a, I was a public face, it was embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Like, I, didn't, I knew I didn't look good. And I certainly didn't feel good. Bro, I'm, when you're that big, you know, clothes don't fit off the rack. You know, I'm having to have my clothes made. And I thought, like, oh, well, I can afford it, so it's no big deal. Right. No, yeah. it's a big deal. Yeah. You know, I didn't like going shopping. I wore the same shit every single day. Um, and I still kind of do that. But I don't have to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. Now I know, like, any T-shirt I pick off the rack is going to fit, and I'm going to look pretty good. You know what I mean? Uh, I can wear normal shorts. I can wear normal jeans. Right. Can, you know what I mean? Like, that, there's a lot of – there is a lot of stock to that. And if you've never been really out of shape where shit doesn't fit, man, I appreciate going through those times. Because it's, taught me, it's taught me to really connect with a lot of guys that struggle in that area. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I grew up a fat kid. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'll never forget this. I was freshman year of high school. I went up, we were at a dance. I was checking this girl out the whole night. Finally got enough courage at the end of the night to go up to her and they were playing the three slow songs at the end of the night. I'll never forget it. And my mom was dating a guy at the time who was a total disaster, but he was a former bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. And I go up to this girl and I'm like, would you like to dance? And she literally did this. She was like, looked me up and down, up and down. She's like, not a chance. Oh, man. And it was, I was 16, came home, and I was really upset. And my mo- and my mom's boyfriend, who was living with us at the time, he's like, so what happened? And I told him, he was like, I just got one question for you. I'm like, what's that? And this is where, going back to what, how we started the whole conversation, in every bad situation, because there were very there was extreme abuse going on, a lot of drinking, drugs, and all this stuff going on through my childhood. But there was always good that came out of it. Mm-hmm. And this guy was a disaster. He was a nightmare. But there's one good thing. And he said, "I got one question for you." I was like, "What's that?" And he goes, "You tired of being a fat ass yet?" And I was like, "Well, that kind of hurts." But uh, yeah. And and my my response was, "Yeah, yeah, I am." And he's like, "All right, tomorrow we start." Yeah. And he would wake me up every morning at four thirty. I hated it at first. I lost 50 pounds yeah. over about seven months. And that was like the kickstart when I was 17. I, I lost all that weight. And I'll never forget, you know, my wife, I love the fact that you're like, I'm weak, but I've learned discipline skills. Like, so like when I go off the rails, like, you know, if because there have been times, I mean, you saw the before picture, yeah. like I was heavier. And my wife, if I'm in the pantry, you know, grabbing like a little Snickers thing, she's like, she's like, uh, Larry, she's like, um, I see that Larry. Little little Larry fat kid coming out. Like yeah. she's, she's yeah. like, I see your little fat child coming yeah. out here. And I'm like, Yeah, I was like, I think I'm a little fat kid by nature. Yeah. You know, who's just learned some discipline over yeah. the years. Dude, so, yeah. I definitely am. Yeah. I definitely am. I know that for sure, man. Yeah. Like um, you know, it's gonna be a constant struggle till forever for me. Yeah. You know, to fight that. I know exactly that feeling you're talking about too. I've had plenty of those exact same circumstances. And the tr- the truth is, um, yeah, I I feel that man. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I I I've been there. Like that exact scenario at that dance. I've I've done that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, and a lot of other ones too, just like yeah. that. And you know, I used to think it was about uh, you know, oh, I didn't have a six pack, so like none of the girls. Were, that wasn't what it was. What it was is I didn't believe in myself. Mm-hmm. I didn't have confidence. And the reason I didn't have confidence because I wasn't doing the shit that I knew I was supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? And um, so I feel that. Yeah. That's real shit. It, it, <laughs> yeah. it is, man. That'll cause you to change some stuff. Oh, it will. Yeah. Without a doubt. It definitely sent me on a journey. Yeah. Well, man, as we, as we wrap up here, I know you got, you've got you got the book out now, which, yeah. by the way, I've gone to the website. The last couple of times I've been there, it's been sold out. Yeah. I got so, one for you. Sweet. Will you yeah. sign it? You'll sign it yeah, in blood, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. In oh, blood. yeah, yeah. <laughs> blood. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, you, 
you're every just mention everywhere we can find you on social media yeah. and everything else. Um, basically, guys, you know, I'm doing a lot of my podcast uh, and uh, through Instagram stories. Right. I've sort of gotten away from just static posts. So I don't post much anymore, but I do my social activity on Instagram. Uh, I'm active on my stories every single day. Um, you go to andyforsella.com or at Andy Frisella on Instagram. Or uh, if you want to learn about 75 Hard, you know, just go to 75hard.com. It's a free program. Uh, you can do it for free. There is a book you have to buy, but the book's good. It's going to give you a lot. So, yeah. um, you know, that's where I'm doing my thing. And that's where I do most of my content. And then uh, we have Ed, Ed and I have, Ed Milet and I yep. have Arte Syndicate, yep. which is where we do most of our uh, business coaching, uh, where we get in depth. You know, I used to do the MF MFCEO project, mm -hmm. which was very uh, much more technical than what my podcast is now. Uh, it's real AF. I still talk a lot about personal development, but I also, you know, BS a lot too and mm -hmm. talk about opinion stuff. Um, when I was just doing the MFCEO project, I felt like I couldn't give my opinions on things. It was more people just wanted to hear me and hear my knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so I do most of that content within the Arte Syndicate now. And I do most of my just BSing and, uh, on, on Real AF. Now, and I will say uh, that might give it a little bit too loose of a uh, – it's not a fun show. We, we do concentrate a lot on personal development, but, but we also talk about, a lot about the world. You know, what's right. going on in the world, current events. And uh, it gets sort of like our conversation went today where we talk about a problem and then how it relates to us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And what we can do personally. Because the truth is all these problems that we see in the world, they're all, they're all the reflection of a lot of individual problems mm -hmm. that we all have as a society. I if, wholeheartedly agree yes, with that. Yes, sir. And yeah. if we want to fix that, guess what we got to fix first? Us. That's right. Yeah. And when we fix us, other people notice that. Mm -hmm. And then they fix us. And that's how we fix this. How, if you guys are nodding your head and you're like, fuck, I'm tired of this shit too. Look, man, if we want it to be better, guess who's got to be better? That would be us. us. The man in the mirror. That's right. That's right. And, um, and, and you know, that's it. It's that yeah. simple. So um, it's really cool that you guys have built this community of guys that are want, want to be better. Yeah. Because I see a lot of people now that just don't care anymore. And that's unfortunate. I mean, we, we say all the time that – too many men live a quiet life of desperation and mm -hmm. isolation. Yeah. And the definition of hell is meeting the man that you could have been when you're on your deathbed. Yeah, dude. Ed says that all Does the he? time. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And, bro, I think that's such a great uh, – such a great way to think about it. Yeah. You know? It scares me, man. It does. It scares me. But, you know, the thing is, is that I think the mission you're creating, you know, the mission we're creating, where you're, you're giving men, people, you know, a foundation to where – you know, we, we always say this, on your deathbed, we want you to have a big old smile on your face. Yeah. Welcoming whatever life comes after this one, knowing like it wasn't always pretty. Yeah. But I did it, and I did it with everything that I had. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think this is the first I can say that the last two years of my life where I could say, because like, dude, with the COVID thing, right? Remember when it started? March. Well, yeah. It's, well, dude, it, but you remember, that, yeah. remember when it started and they were showing us the videos of like people just dying in the street? Yeah. Like they were showing those videos of China. You know, it was all BS, right? right. We know now. But at first, man, I was like, dude. It's the end of the world. Yeah. yeah. Like I really thought that. I'm yeah. like, dude, this could be like, if this is real, man, like this could kill me mm -hmm. and this could be it. And I had, so we, I think all of us maybe had that little private conversation in our brain where we're like, fuck, dude. Like, what if this is, yeah, like, this could the be apocalypse it. type stuff? You know, what if this is a plague or something that we, 100 million people die? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you have to start questioning your own mortality. And and I had a few real conversations with myself about what what I would think. And, I, you know, I was pretty at peace. You know yeah. what I mean? I felt yeah, good yeah, about yeah. it. I'm yeah. like, look, dude, like, yeah, I've made a lot of mistakes. And, and yeah. yes, there's, there's, like, dude, my whole 30s, my whole 20s, I could have done way more. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but, but dude, I was learning. And so I started to give myself that grace, mm -hmm. you know, like, hey, we're learning. Uh, and I think I finally made up some real progress in my life uh, personally, mentally. I think I finally figured it out, what I, what I need to do mm -hmm. to get mentally. Because, like, dude, I was, always, I was always like, I was that guy, which is weird because I think a lot of people view me as that mentally tough dude now. But the truth is, is I was always the guy who was – trying to figure out how, what their secret was. Like, why does, why did, like, I would look at a guy like Goggins and I'd be like, dude, 
what does this guy have? Yeah, it's like, like how? What is that? <laughs> you know, or like even Jocko. I'm like, yeah. dude, what is that he has? Or anybody who had one of those mentalities. And I always wanted it, but I never had it. And uh, it wasn't until the last couple of years I figured out that it's actually a skill, mm-hmm. something we could build. Right. You know, and, and that's, that was cool. And so now that I figured that out, you know, um, it's, helped, it's helped me come to terms with myself in a lot of ways. That makes yeah. sense. No, it makes you know? total sense. And it, it's interesting that you say that because my wife and I had a very similar conversation, like right when everything started. I was, and I had that moment. I was like, I was like, Jessica, I was like, what if this is it? Yeah. Like, what if what if we're all going to die? And this is what I, and I'm sure Emily is a yeah. strong force of nature in your life. Absolutely. Jess, Jessica is for me. And she looked at me and she goes, what if it is? Yeah. She goes, you got any regrets? Have you, yeah. have you laid it all out there? And I'm like, yeah, actually I have. And then yeah. she goes, well then who cares? Dude. And I, I was like, isn't that a good yeah, feeling? It was a great feeling. It yeah. was almost like, all right. Yeah. Whatever is going to happen, it's just going to happen. And, yeah. but I lived my, I didn't live that quiet life of desperation. No. If this is the end, I'd be like, all right, I'm, yeah. go, I'm going out and I'm happy. Yeah. But it's good. So. Yeah. I think, that, you know, and I think at the end of the day, you know, really that's all you can, that's all you can do. Yeah. You know what I mean? We can sit here and analyze it until the cows come home. But at the end of the day, man, you know, being able to know that you gave what it is that you were capable of giving and that you produced some good and you did some good. And that good's going to live on. You know, a lot of people talk about legacy. What's your legacy going to be? Well, mm-hmm. you know, um, most people don't know this because I haven't talked about it. But the reason I, the real reason I don't have kids because I can't have kids. Okay. So um, my, you know, a lot of people ask us, when are you going to have kids? When are you going to have kids? Well, uh, <laughs> unless some shit changes and like, dude, look, you know, I know there's solutions and all these things and all these, I know we've done all, I know all of that. So you guys listening, you know. I'm, I'm aware, you know what I mean? I'm at peace with where I'm at. Yeah. Um, but like the legacy, you know, dude, we're going to be fucking dead. What's your legacy? Your legacy isn't going to be like this big statue and people celebrate you and this and that. Some people want that. That doesn't mean really mean, that's not really legacy to me. Legacy Mm -hmm. to me is like, you know, I affected this person's life and that person had a better life because of that. You see what I'm saying? That's legacy. Yeah. And, and, uh, you don't have to, you know, the recognition and having all that, that's never, that's not important to me. I, man, I love you even more. Yeah. Now. Seriously, man. I, because it's the, the impact that you yeah. had on relationships in your life. Yeah. I think it's, that's what it is. It is. Yeah. It's the, you know, my, my grandfather's been dead since 1998. Yeah. And that man's legacy, man, lives with it. Like he taught me how to love a woman. Yeah. Like the way he loved my grandmother. And he didn't die a rich man. Yeah. It's not like he can take all that stuff with him That's anyway. right. That's right. But it was like the impact of like how I treat my kids, how I treat my wife. Yeah. You know, the, these things that they that people leave behind. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, God willing, that legacy will continue to live on through my kids. That's right. Right? That's right. And that's, uh, dude, I, I love that perspective. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, I look at my dad, like, right? Like my, like my dad. We're the good dad project. So- you know, uh, nobody's building a statue of my dad unless it's me or Sal, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Or my, my older brother and sister. I mean, I probably will, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but what I'm saying is, is like he was so, that man was, has been and is so impactful on us even today. Mm-hmm. But the most of the world doesn't know who he is. Right. But, but you can't argue his legacy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because without him, there wouldn't be 400 people that work here that are all, building great lives working here. And then the, all those people are changing thousands of people's lives every day. That would have never happened without him. That's a yeah. legacy, man. And I'm fortunate enough that he gets to walk in here every day and see it. That's pretty cool. That is. That's you know? amazing. So, yeah. and I don't know if he ever thinks about it like that, but you know, I hope he does Yeah, because it wouldn't, it wouldn't have happened without him. Right. You know? And I think that I've always been a supporter of your products. I buy everything from, from you. Thank you. And I'm not just saying that cause you're on the show, but like, I'll, <laughs> I'll never forget, man. Like this was years ago. Like I went in, I bought like a quest bar or whatever it was. I bought a bar. And then like a week later I get this note in the mail and I'm like, it's handwritten. Yeah. And I'm like, what is this? It's got like S2 on it and open it up. It's the guy who checked me out. It's like this thank you note. Yeah. And I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Like who writes thank you notes? And ever since, I mean, I've been a loyal customer ever since then, but it's crazy because every time I walk in, 
the store that I go to once a month, they remember my name. They ask how the podcast is doing. They remember my 12 year old plays football. Who's been in there? How's the football season going? I'm like, how do you guys remember this stuff? Like the, like the service is top notch. Thank you. But the, the, the cool thing. So that's legacy, right? Yeah. Those young men and women that do that, First of all, that comes as a result of us not having any customers and genuinely appreciating. So any of you out there that are shopping with, with us, thank you. Yeah. Like We appreciate that for yeah. real because there was a long time we didn't have you guys or have anybody. So that's a genuine appreciation, but we teach that to our people. And now, because you know, you can't fake that. Those guys can't fake that. Like, oh, they remember your, your kids or, or, or whatever they're doing and this and that. What that means is they're listening and they're developing a skill to actually care about people. Right. Which that legacy, whether those, those, whether those young men and women stay with our company and build a career here or whether they go anywhere else, they're going to be better. Mm-hmm. That's legacy, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. My goal is for our people, no matter where they end up, whether they end up with us, which I hope they do, or, you know, life takes them another direction. You know, I've had one of my best friends, actually one of my attorneys, used to work at my store as an employee. Now he's my attorney. So, you know, he didn't stay with the company, but he went and took the skills and built himself an awesome life. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's cool, man. It is cool. I mean, just little things like that go yeah. a long way. I'll never forget last last story with an experience with buying supplements from your from your store. I went in and we were talking about the book linchpin. Oh yeah. It's a good you book. Know, it is. Yeah. It is. And one of your, one of your guys, Quentin, Quentin white at the time was like, Hey man, have you ever read that book? And I'm like, no, I haven't. And, um, he's like, well, next time you come in, I'll have it here for you. And I'm like, Oh, okay. that's you know, awesome. Like, okay. Whatever. Yeah. So I go in like a month later and, um, guys checking me out he's like, Oh wait, you're Larry. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, I got a book in the back for you. Quentin left it for you. And I'm like, like the guy remembered or you can't, yeah. and there was a note in it. Yeah. Hey man, I, if I'm not here, I told the guys to give this to you. Enjoy the book. Yeah. And I was like, that's awesome. That is insane service. Like yeah. just the, the level of TLC that you guys teach. Your Did employees. you read a book? Yeah. I read a great it. book. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. yeah. It was like, uh, gosh, that was like four or five years ago. Dude, I read that book. Seth Godin to me is the master. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. the man. Like he is so underrated. People, yeah. people sleep on him. Yeah. Like everybody's talking about Gary Vee and all this. No, yeah. Seth Godin, dude. Yeah, he is. He is awesome. I read. If you haven't read every single book that man's written, you're missing out. Yeah. That's my opinion. He, I love his message. I love his style of writing. He, he's a good dude. Yeah. Well, dude, I have thoroughly enjoyed the, out of 600 episodes, man. And I'm not just saying this because we're sitting next to each other. This has been probably one of the most uplifting, energetic, fun oh, thanks, uh, man. shows, man. This was this yeah, this was is great. Time. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I enjoyed it as well. Yeah. So thanks for having me on, man. You bet, man. Yeah. yeah cool. All right. Thanks All for right. what are we doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, mask, yeah. elbow. What are yeah. we doing? Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. All right.